What do we need to do to be part of God's people? Are we able to make the cut? Do we have what it takes to cut it? Welcome to Branch Together. Today we're reading Acts 15, but before we dive in, let's take a moment and pray. God, I thank you for your scriptures. I thank you for uh, your servant, Luke, and these words that we can daily read and learn about the early church and how your spirit was at work and sending and moving and transforming lives. Lord, we pray that your same spirit would be at work today as we read, as we listen, work in our hearts, help us understand what's essential to your good news and what we can let go of. In your name we pray, amen. Acts chapter 15. Now some men came down from Judea and began to teach the brothers. Unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. When Paul and Barnabas had a major argument and debate with them, the church appointed Paul and Barnabas and some others from among them to go up to meet with the apostles and elders in Jerusalem about this point of disagreement. So they were sent on their way by the church, and as they passed through both Phoenicia and Samaria, they were relating at length the conversion of the Gentiles and bringing great joy to all the brothers. When they arrived in Jerusalem, they were received by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they reported all the things God had done with them. But some from the religious party of the Pharisees, who had believed, stood up and said, It is necessary to circumcise the Gentiles and to order them to observe the law of Moses. Both the apostles and the elders met together to deliberate about this matter. After there had been much debate, Peter stood up and said to them, Brothers, You know that some time ago God chose me to preach to the Gentiles so they would hear the message of the gospel and believe. And God who knows the heart has testified to them by giving them the Holy Spirit just as he did to us. And he made no distinction between them and us, cleansing their hearts by faith. So now why are you putting God to the test by placing on the neck of the disciples a yoke that neither our ancestors nor we have been able to bear? On the contrary, we believe that we are saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ in the same way as they are. The whole group kept quiet and listened to Barnabas and Paul while they explained all the miraculous signs and wonders God had done among the Gentiles through them. After they stopped speaking, James replied, Brothers, listen to me. Simeon has explained how God first concerned himself to select from among the Gentiles a people for his name. The word of the prophets agree with this as it is written. After this, I will return and I will rebuild the fallen tent of David. I will rebuild its ruins and restore it so that the rest of humanity may seek the Lord. Namely, all the Gentiles I have called to be my own, says the Lord, who makes these things known from long ago. Therefore, I conclude that we should not cause extra difficulty for those among the Gentiles who are turning to God, but that we should write them a letter telling them to abstain from things defiled by idols and from sexual immorality and from what has been strangled and from blood. For Moses has had those who proclaim him in every town from ancient times, because he is read out loud in the synagogues every Sabbath. Then the apostles and elders with the whole church decided to send men chosen from among them, Judas called Barsabbas and Silas, leaders among the brothers to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. They sent this letter from them. From the apostles and elders, your brothers, to the Gentile brothers and sisters in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia. Cilicia. Greetings. Since we have heard that some have gone out from among us with no orders from us and have confused you, unsetting your minds by what they said, we have unanimously decided to choose men to send to you, along with our dear friends Barnabas and Paul, who have risked their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, we are sending Judas and Silas, who will tell you these things themselves in person. For it seemed best to the Holy Spirit and to us not to place any greater burden on you than these necessary rules, that you abstain from meat that has been sacrificed to idols and from blood, and from what has been strangled and from sexual immorality. If you keep yourselves from doing these things, you will do well. Farewell. So when they were dismissed, they went down to Antioch, and after gathering the entire group together, they delivered the letter. When they read it out loud, the people rejoiced at its encouragement. Both Judas and Silas, who were prophets themselves, encouraged and strengthened the brothers with a long speech. 
After they had spent some time there, they were sent off in peace by the brothers to those who had sent them. But Paul and Barnabas remained in Antioch, teaching and proclaiming, along with many others, the word of the Lord. After some days, Paul said to Barnabas, let's return and visit the brothers in every town where we proclaim the word of the Lord to see how they are doing. Barnabas wanted to bring John, called Mark, along with them too. But Paul insisted that they should not take along this one who had left them in Pamphylia and had not accompanied them in the work. They had a sharp disagreement so that they parted company. Barnabas took along Mark and sailed away to Cyprus. But Paul chose Silas and set out. Commended to the grace of the Lord by the brothers and sisters, he passed through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. There's a big debate going on in Acts 15. How much of the law do you have to keep? Or how Jewish must you become to be a follower of Jesus? Jesus is the Jewish Messiah. So do you have to convert to Judaism to come to faith in Christ? This is a huge debate and it's a huge but good problem to have because God is obviously doing something incredible. He's doing some incredible work. The Holy Spirit's working in the lives of Samaritans and of Gentiles. And uh, as all of this stuff is unfolding, as all these people that haven't been part of the Jewish nation are coming to believe, we, there's this debate. What do we do with these folks? What do they have to change to, to be part of this faith in Christ, this new community? Some believe that you have to become circumcised. Gentiles must take the marks of circumcision to be accepted into the faith. Paul and Barnabas disagree. As they've seen the Holy Spirit at work, as they've seen the Holy Spirit uh, fill and descend upon these Gentiles who, who weren't circumcised. So they go to the center of the church at this time, Jerusalem, to discuss this matter with some of the elders or apostles of the church. Everyone gathers. There's this just big defining moment meaning in the life of the church. Peter begins to speak. He says, you all remember that I was sent to share the good news with the Gentiles and God gave them the Holy Spirit just like us. The circumcised got the spirit and so did the uncircumcised. There was no distinction. No distinction was made. No partiality was shown. We are all saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. So don't put a yoke on them that our fathers weren't able to bear themselves. The assembly gets quiet after Peter's words. Paul and Barnabas then share the signs and wonders God did through the same Gentiles. Then James, kind of the leader of the church at the time, gets up to speak. He relays what Simeon experienced and that he experienced similar things. And then he explains what the words of the prophets of the Old Testament said, how they testify to what's actually unfolding right now in their midst. It's incredible. This is an amazing moment where they are piecing together what God is doing. James, the brother of Jesus, has heard God working with the Gentiles. Simeon saw it. Peter, Jesus' best friend, saw it. And Paul, the persecutor and huge Pharisee, saw the work among the Gentiles. Paul was the greatest law keeper. And now he says, no, it's the work of the Holy Spirit. It's the grace of Jesus. There's no par partiality. Circumcision and uncircumcision aren't important anymore. Peter, a great Jew who tried to chop an ear off a soldier, sees Cornelius, the Roman centurion, come to faith. Same for him as Paul. Circumcision, uncircumcision, the law, it not, it's, it's relegated now to the work of the Spirit. And then in verses 19 to 20, James gives this defining answer. He says, Therefore, my judgment is that we should not trouble those of the Gentiles who turn to God, but should write to them to abstain from the things polluted by idols and from sexual immorality and what has been strangled and from blood. So the letter goes out to the Gentile believers and there is rejoicing. Two things to consider today. First, the Holy Spirit works in all kinds of people. The good news transforms all kinds of people. What kinds of people? All kinds of people. Second, what barriers do we put up that keep people away from receiving the good news and following Jesus? In Acts 15, the council tears down dividing walls and barriers that would keep people from following Jesus Christ. As you look at this chapter, what barriers do we create in our churches? 
What barriers do you and I create that keep people from receiving the good news of Jesus? I bet if we thought about it, we'd find more barriers that we put up than we realize. Think about that today, dwell on it, and then think about how you can knock those barriers down so that people can get Jesus and his good news and his grace and his mercy and not have any barriers put up by his church or his people that would keep them from seeing and receiving the good news of Jesus Christ and his Holy Spirit. That's all for today. Hope you have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow as we branch together.